Okay, let's begin. Number 10. Swallowing gum stays in your stomach for seven years. The belief began as a cautionary warning in early parenting guides, spreading through schools as a simple way to discourage kids from swallowing gum. It gained traction because gum base doesn't break down like normal food, making the myth feel plausible enough to survive for decades. Digestive science shows a different reality. While gum base is indigestible, it still moves through the stomach and intestines by peristalsis, the same process that pushes seeds or fiber along. Gastroenterology reviews confirm that gum typically exits the body within 24 to 48 hours, not years, and problems only occur when large amounts are swallowed repeatedly in a short time. Doctors frequently use swallowed objects as comparison points. Items far more rigid than gum, such as small coins, often pass naturally within days. Gum, being soft and flexible, follows the same path. The myth persists because it sounds like a warning, but biologically it has no long-term hold on the digestive system. Number 9. Carrots Improve Night Vision The idea became popular during World War II, when British military officials spread a false story that pilots had exceptional night vision because they ate large amounts of carrots. The claim was deliberate propaganda meant to hide the real reason for improved accuracy, new airborne radar systems, yet the carrot explanation entered public culture and stuck. Carrots contain beta-carotene, which the body converts into vitamin A, and vitamin A is essential for basic eye function. But having more vitamin A than your body needs does not enhance night vision beyond normal levels. Ophthalmology studies show that only people with a vitamin A deficiency experience improved low-light vision after increasing intake. For people with normal levels, extra carrots do nothing to boost vision in the dark. A practical example appears in clinical cases of night blindness in regions with malnutrition. When patients lacking vitamin A receive supplements, their low-light vision returns to normal, but not beyond it. This demonstrates the real limit. Carrots can fix a deficiency, not create superhuman nighttime sight. Number 8. Black holes suck everything in. The image of black holes acting as cosmic vacuums started with early sci-fi illustrations that exaggerated their power. Because they trap light, the public came to picture them as constantly pulling in anything nearby, an idea far simpler than what the physics actually describes. A black hole's gravity behaves like any massive object. Distance determines the pull, not an automatic suction force. An object orbiting far enough away follows a stable path, just as it would around a star of the same mass. Only material drifting too close to the event horizon is drawn inward, and that boundary is far smaller than most depictions suggest. Astronomers studying the center of the Milky Way see stars circling the supermassive black hole year after year without falling in. Their steady motion shows the real behavior clearly, normal gravitational influence unless something crosses the point of no return. The vacuum idea survives because it's dramatic, not because it matches how black holes interact with their surroundings. Number 7. Santa Claus was created by Coca-Cola. The belief grew from Coca-Cola's famous 1930s holiday advertisements, which featured a red-suited Santa illustrated by Haddon Sunbloom. The campaign was so widely distributed that many people assumed the company invented both the character and his appearance, turning a long cultural figure into a corporate creation in the public imagination. The modern image of Santa existed long before those ads. By the late 1800s, American newspapers and magazines were already printing drawings of a heavyset bearded man in red clothing, shaped largely by political cartoonist Thomas Nast. These portrayals were themselves based on earlier European traditions of St. Nicholas, Father Christmas, and Sinterklaas, all of which carried recognizable features that predate Coca-Cola by centuries. Coca-Cola's contribution was refinement and consistency, not invention. Sunbloom's artwork popularized a version of Santa already in circulation, giving him a uniform look and embedding that image into commercial culture. The company amplified an existing figure, but the origins of Santa's appearance trace back through decades of art and centuries of folklore, not a single advertising campaign. Number six, lightning never strikes the same place twice. The claim became common as a simple warning phrase rather than a scientific statement. It appeared in early safety pamphlets and school lessons as a way to make lightning sound less unpredictable. Over time, it settled into everyday language suggesting that a strike is a one-time event tied to chance rather than conditions. In atmospheric science, lightning consistently favors the same locations because it follows the path of least electrical resistance. Tall, conductive, or isolated structures build stronger electric fields, making them natural targets during storms. The Empire State Building is struck dozens of times each year, and broadcast towers across the world record repeat hits for the same reason, height, 
and conductivity invite repeated discharges. This pattern holds in open landscapes as well. Lone trees, ridgelines, and mountaintops concentrate charge and repeatedly receive strikes during active storm cycles. The behavior shows a clear rule. Lightning returns to the places that make it easiest for charge to equalize. The saying survives in conversation, but the physics makes its meaning impossible. Number five, bats are blind. The phrase came from early observations of bats flying at dusk, when their eyes seemed less important than their quick, precise movements. Naturalists in the 18th and 19th centuries described bats as creatures that feel the air, and the idea slowly settled into public belief. As their nocturnal behavior became associated with darkness, the myth of blindness took hold. Bats actually have fully functioning eyes and many species see quite well. Their vision is adapted for low light conditions, allowing them to detect movement and navigate landscapes before relying on echolocation. Fruit-eating species, in particular, depend on sight to locate trees and identify ripe food. Research in bat physiology shows that their eyes contain the same basic structures found in other mammals, with sensitivity tuned to dim environments rather than daylight. Echolocation adds a second navigation system rather than replacing vision. It gives bats precision in complete darkness, but they continue using their eyes whenever light is available. Field studies tracking foraging behavior show bats switching between sight and sound depending on the task. The misconception persists because echolocation is extraordinary, but it never made their eyesight disappear. Number four, humans only use 10% of their brain. The claim traces back to early 20th century misinterpretations of neurological studies, where scientists noted that only certain regions were active during specific tasks. Popular writers simplified this into the idea that most of the brain sits unused, and the phrase took on a life of its own. Hollywood and self-help culture later amplified it, turning a misunderstanding into a global belief. Modern neuroscience shows that nearly every part of the brain has a defined role, from motor control and memory to sensory processing and emotional regulation. Brain imaging methods such as fMRI and PET scans consistently reveal widespread activity, even during rest. The brain maintains networks responsible for baseline functions, coordination, and internal thought processes that never shut down. Clinical evidence reinforces this. Injuries affecting even small regions of the brain can impair language, movement, or perception, demonstrating how much real estate is essential for everyday life. The 10% claim survives because it suggests untapped potential, but the functioning of the brain depends on continuous, near-total engagement of its interconnected systems. Number three, goldfish have a three-second memory. The idea emerged from early aquarium culture, where goldfish repeated the same movements in small bowls and appeared to forget obstacles or routines. Their simple behavior led to a popular assumption that the fish were incapable of forming lasting memories and the three-second figure entered casual conversation without scientific backing. Research in animal cognition shows a very different picture. Goldfish can learn feeding schedules, recognize patterns, and remember maze layouts for weeks or months. Studies using reward-based training demonstrate that they return to specific locations at set times, indicating long-term memory and spatial awareness. Their ability to distinguish shapes and colors further confirms sustained learning, not momentary recall. These abilities appear in practical settings too. Goldfish kept in consistent environments swim to feeding areas when they hear familiar cues or see routine movements in the room. Their behavior reflects retained information rather than constant rediscovery. The myth persists because their calm, repetitive motion looks simple, but the underlying memory capacity is far greater than the three-second claim suggests. Number two, the Great Wall of China is visible from space. The claim became widespread in the early 20th century, long before humans ever reached orbit. Travel writers described the wall as so long and monumental that it must be visible from the moon, and the phrase was repeated in textbooks as an impressive-sounding fact. It survived because it felt intuitive. A massive structure stretching across mountains should stand out from above. Orbital images show otherwise. The Great Wall is narrow, built from materials that blend into the surrounding landscape, and follows rugged terrain that disrupts long sightlines. From low Earth orbit, astronauts report that it is extremely difficult to pick out without magnification or perfect lighting conditions. Many larger human-made structures, such as cities, airports, and agricultural patterns, are far easier to identify from the same altitude. When astronauts aboard the International Space Station attempt to photograph the wall, they rely on telephoto lenses and clear atmospheric conditions, and even then the structure often disappears into the terrain. 
The idea of casual visibility survives in popular culture, but direct observation from orbit shows that the wall is not uniquely or reliably visible compared to countless other features on Earth. Number one, touching frogs gives you warts. The belief came from the appearance of many common toads whose skin is covered with raised bumps that resemble warts. Early folk medicine linked visual similarity to cause, and the association passed through generations as a warning to children. Because the skin texture looked infectious, it was assumed to produce the same bumps in humans. Warts in humans are caused by strains of the human papillomavirus, a pathogen that does not originate in frogs or toads. Their bumps are part of their natural skin structure, containing glands used for defense and moisture regulation. These glands do not transmit viruses to human skin, and handling a healthy amphibian poses no risk of wart formation. The biology of amphibians and humans does not allow cross-species transmission for this condition. Most cases of childhood warts come from direct contact with contaminated surfaces or existing warts on other people, not from wildlife. In field research settings, biologists handle frogs without concern for this myth, using gloves only to protect the animal's delicate skin. The misconception survives because appearance was mistaken for cause, not because the animals carry anything capable of producing warts in humans. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. If you want more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel.